thinking back to this time a couple of years ago, I didn't think I'd ever be in this situation, let alone be in the Six Nations squad and then come into the Summer Tour squad. So it's all pretty surreal at the minute still. Who would play you in a film of your life? <sighs> well, it's got to be somebody with a mullet now, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, if I get picked to play for Scotland, it'll be, it'll be one of the best days of my life. Hey Joe, we've got a couple of special guests in now uh, that will come in in a second or so, but just before that, it's great to get Gregor's insight, great to understand how, how much thought and preparation goes into selecting the squad and looking ahead, but um, he seems in good form and, and excited of the, the weeks ahead. Yeah, it's great to get that insight because I think particularly as a fan, you you just see the names on a bit of paper, mm. but obviously a lot goes into it, but yeah, he seemed really excited, really positive. Um, someone that is involved in that squad is Kyle Rowe, who joins us now. Um, and Kyle's got a very special guest with him. <laughs> uh, if you're listening to this on the podcast, you're going to have to go onto the website, scottishrugby.org, just to have a little look at who Kyle has <laughs> on his lap. It is the cutest podcast guest we've ever had, or you've ever had. It's my first podcast. I don't think things are ever going to get any It'll better. This will never be topped, Kyle. Because <laughs> little Maggie, Aye. eight weeks old. Kyle, just tell us a bit about her. Uh, hi, this is wee Maggie. Got her on a Friday from Wales. And... Ah, she's been a gem ever since. What so is she? She's a wee whippet. A whippet. Aye, so she'll be she'll be quick one day. Oh, well, so are you. <laughs> she's, a Good bit, you. Uh, she, she's a bit clumsy at the minute. <laughs> she's so tiny. Uh, absolutely tiny. She's in a wee basket sitting there. Yeah. Just uh, uh, pretty special. I think she's, she, she likes that microphone though, Kyle. She might I take know, a bite of that. Try to keep it away from her. Yeah, she we're going start to chewing it. Try not to be too <laughs> distracted by the puppy because we do have some important matters to talk about. Kyle, first of all, congratulations Thank uh, you. on your call up. Um, we want to get to know you a bit better though. We do want to get into the kind of how you're feeling, the excitement around yeah. the tour, but we've got some very important questions to start off with. A bit of a quick fire getting to know you, if you okay. don't mind. So I'm yeah. going to just chuck a few questions at you. Just say what comes into your mind. Um, okay. An easy one to start with, I think. Uh, rugby or football? Um, rugby, but I was football. Yeah, I've got to say, you were yeah. involved heavily in football. Yeah, I was. So I've, no, I've so destroyed your quick fire Maybe already, not that easy. You were at a, a decent level at football. Were you yeah. in a scholarship in America, was that right? Uh, no, well, I applied for it. Right. Um, but kind of chose rugby ah. after I'd sort of applied for it, so it kind of fell by the wayside. Ah. Then I played for um, Scottish independent schools yeah. and got two caps for Scotland as well against England. So What position? Uh, centre mid. There you go. Oh, yeah, he's pulling the strings. Yeah. Sorry, your quick fire <laughs> no, questions no, no, have been like destroyed it already. It, it can lead into <laughs> other things. This is what it's what we're here for. Um, Ed Sheeran or Harry Styles? Ed Sheeran. There we go. Nothing more to say I on that one. <laughs> <laughs> right now, would you confidently take anyone on at a 100 meter sprint or an arm wrestle? Anyone ever? <laughs> anyone ever? Oof. I mean, I'm quick, but I'm not. I'm not that quick. <laughs> And Maybe not Usain Bolt. And like arm wrestle, not the biggest guy. <laughs> so like, what would you back yourself in though? I'd say hundred meter more than an arm wrestle. There we go. Texting or talking? Talking. Favorite day of the week? Um, quite like a Tuesday actually. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Most people say the weekend, but I would no, I'd, I'd, I don't know. I just, just Tuesday's like Tuesday. Tuesday. always been a good day for me. It's Tuesday there day off. Go. No, it's not. That's quite heavy. It's usually, it's usually a bigger day. Heavy day, isn't it? Then it means I can have a couple of treats that ah, night. Do you know what I mean? The workload. Ah, like Tuesday it. treat day, yeah, is it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Early riser or night owl? Uh, depends what mood I'm in. <laughs> if I'm gaming, I'll be a night owl. <laughs> if I've got stuff to do, I'll be an early bird. Okay. Would you rather be able to speak every language in the world, or be able to speak to animals? Oh, that's a tough one. I'd actually rather, I'd rather speak every language, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, I've, I, I, quite, I quite like the idea of being able to speak another language, but I just, I can't. And you can so. probably communicate with Maggie in your own mm. way. Anyway. Yeah, Maggie's not happy at that. Yeah. <laughs> My next question, I, I do think this is going to be the easiest one. Dogs or cats? Oh, it's got to be dogs. Cars or bikes? Uh, cars. Giving presents or getting presents? Uh, given. Oh, he's a giver. We like that. Um, Facebook or Instagram? Uh, Instagram. Video games or movie night? Um, video games. 
what's the game of choice? Gregor's already mentioned Call of Duty in the yeah, team. Yeah, it's it on currently, it's Call of Duty at the oh, minute. Still, it was Call of Duty when I played. Yeah. Yeah. Must have stayed the test still, of time. Uh, still, still kicking about. That oh, was rubbish. I never played it. I used to run about shooting seagulls, you know, when you can't control the gun and you're just like. I'm not great at the minute uh, either. <laughs> there'll, be some, there'll be some pretty good players in the margin, eh? Yeah, very good. Who's the top of the tree? What, in the squad? Uh, so oh, I'm not sure. I play with some mates at home. Oh, right. we're, all as, we're all as bad as each other, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gregor also mentioned, just to go on a slight tangent, that um, a lot of the squad members are fans of Love Island. Do you watch it? Nah. I watched the 2019 one. Okay. I've not, not watched it since. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. Actually, I asked the missus on Sunday. I was like, oh, do you want to watch Love Island? She was like, nah. Was, <laughs> then she asked, oh, she was like, do you? I was like, nah, yeah, it doesn't. It's had its time a little yeah, bit. Yeah, not for me. Okay, a few more. Chocolate no. or crisps? chocolate who would play you in a film of your life well, it's got to be somebody with a mullet now doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> um not sure any actors have mullets do they i'm trying to think i don't know maybe if you step back in time a little bit what um what's what, what uh when i first knew you, you didn't have the mullet this is a fairly no, we short, new back, thing. short back inside know, was, uh, so where's the where's the inspiration coming from i don't know it was over uh it was during covid um one of my mates just brought out clippers <laughs> and uh yeah from there it's just oh no Sorry. just to let you know what's going on apologies um, oh, maggie has had a little wander over to chris yeah. it's marking her and territory. has decided to mark her territory uh on sure. the on the floor <laughs> of our little podcast yeah, i apologize about that <laughs> <laughs> so i've had worse I don't we'll that. let her off because she's so cute um it's okay Final one of this little quick fire. Uh, your go-to joke. Make us laugh. Oh, God. <laughs> um, oh, I've, got, I've got quite a few jokes, but you've sprung, you sprung it upon me. <laughs> and I've drawn a blank. Um, That's a tough one. It is a, yeah, tough, it one. Is a tough one. Have you not got one, Chris? No, I'm no funny. Not. Do you want me to do mine? Uh, yeah, well, yes. Please. How does an okay. elephant ask for a cake? Can I have a cake, please? That's another visual gag. I know. For the, I know. Uh, not <laughs> only if you want to see podcast. Maggie, head to the website. If you want to see the joke, head to the website. Uh, <sighs> okay. Oh, um, so, yeah, tour. Yes. Getting to know it. Get <laughs> Chris is like swiftly moving on, please. <laughs> just the joke. Just Why did we put bring Joe into this? You, just put us on this? you put us on the spot for the jokes. Um, great to be on tour. You were involved all through the Six Nations as well. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, never, perf- never. You know, performed in the Majesty squad, but you got loads of experience yeah. playing fantastically well at London Irish all year. Mm-hmm. Um, how how much does it mean to be including the tour squad to, to chill in Argentina? Oh, I mean, thinking back to this time a couple of years ago, I didn't think I'd ever be in this situation, let alone be in the Six Nations squad and then come into the summer tour squad. So it's all pretty surreal at the minute still. Uh, gained a lot of experience during the Six Nations. Although I didn't play and I was mm-hmm. disappointed by that because obviously you want to play for your country. I didn't go in with any expectations of playing as obviously I've not been capped yet. Um, still kind of not finding my feet in the Prem, but it's my first season in the Prem. Going through a full season of rugby really because of COVID and even before that I was in the academy and quite young and stuff. So didn't really get a chance, but... Uh, no, I'm just I'm re- I'm really looking forward to being in the squad and uh, and just hopefully showing what I can do. And I mean, if I get picked to play for Scotland, it'll be it'll be one of the best days of my life. And you have been showing what you can do very much so uh, since you joined London Irish. Mm-hmm. Was that a difficult decision in terms of making that move? Uh, it was because Scotland's where I want to be. That's where I want to like grow old, basically in Scotland, but. I knew this time last year when I didn't have anything, any offers after after June. It's kind of a no-brainer, really. I was just, I was saying to my agent, I was like, just get this, get this over the line as quick as you can. Um, you know, I, I wanted to just experience something new because uh, I've, I've I've been in uh, I've been in Scotland for five six years through the academy and all that sort of stuff. I wanted to go and experience something new, so. Um, yeah, I feel like it's been a it's been a good decision for me to to go down, and obviously this season's been kind of a, well, kind of a season that's kind of my breakout year, and finally can finally showing people what I can do. So now I'm re- really enjoying it down there. I'd say it's been more than a breakout. Well, it is a breakout yeah. year, but more than that in terms of some of the performances, the consistency you've shown as well to go from not having a, a huge amount of rugby before that, you know, through 
COVID and the sevens yeah. and academy and everything. But I think back, I think it must be a year ago to the weekend or something, there was a game in Scarlets. You played for Edinburgh, wasn't it? Away in Scarlets, played yeah. really well. And, you know, from that point, you didn't really know what was going to happen next, did you? Played well. No. When did you first kind of hear about or get wind of the, a potential move to London Irish? Was it around that time? Because it was it two games you played at the end of last season, played really well for Edinburgh? No, it was just one. Was it just the Scarlets one? Yeah, I was 24th man the game beforehand. Yeah. And then I got picked to play in that game, which was my first game, well, first real rugby game for in the Beacon Heat. two years. So, like, first five minutes I got a run, made a break, mm-hmm. and oh, I was I was goosed. I, couldn't, I could not <laughs> get my breath It was hot, wasn't it? It was a it proper scorcher. Hot, yeah. And did it end up a draw? Was it like 38 or 28 all or something, wasn't it? I can't remember. Our minds... Yeah. Uh, mine we sc- I think we scored two in the last couple minutes yeah. to bring it back. I'm not sure if we drew or if we lost. I can't I think remember. I draw, I think. Um, but did you have a, a, a way into London Irish before that game, or was it all afterwards? Not. It was. It was kind of. A, well, it wasn't really afterwards. It, I was in talks beforehand, but there was nothing really concrete. Mm-hmm. It was all just kind of hearsay and stuff like that. And um, yeah, after that game, I think I, I, I must have got the contract through or something, and I got it signed. Because I didn't have anything up here, so I was like, rugby's still what I want to do. Didn't want to be left in limbo after, after the last, oh, after that game, and do you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. yeah, I got it signed and moved myself down there. And for people that perhaps haven't seen too much of you play, just tell us a bit about your style of rugby and what kind of impact you can make in this Scotland team. Um, I mean, I, I, I try and work as hard as I can, get myself on the ball. Um, well, try scorer. Yeah, try and Proper obviously try scorer, eh? score, sc- score some good tries. Um, main thing for me is just trying to get my hands on the ball. Um, whether I score a try or whether I beat a few players, it doesn't really bother me. I just want to show people what I can do. And then defensively, just making sure I do my job to the, to the best of my ability and make sure the team trusts in what I'm doing and I trust in, trust in what they do. Big part of the game as well is the high ball reception, really good in the air. Has that been? I mean, you played sevens for a long time, so you're not the exposure to that. But like, it's been a big strength of your game and a, and a difficult skill. Do you work hard on that, or is it just a, a natural, a natural ability? Because you do, you know, you said yourself, not the biggest player, very powerful, very dynamic, but you win balls in the air, which is so important yeah. at all levels. But test rugby now, is that something you pride yourself on? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, also shown in the prem that I can, I can take high balls under pressure. Um, but you got to need a new yeah. tuner shortly. I know. <laughs> Maggie's at them. As long as it keeps her quiet. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I keep working on it in training. Mm-hmm. It's not something that you can leave for a couple of weeks and then you go into a game, you get put in that situation, and you think you'll have it. You have it nailed down. You need to you need to do it every week. Um, but yeah, like throughout the sevens and that, that's kind of where I I gain the confidence in going up to win high balls, whether it's catching or whether it's batting back. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just taking that confidence into into games in the prem is a uh, is yeah, and I feel like that's a it's a good strength of mine to have. Whether it's a, a ball's come to me or I'm going to win the ball, especially Joe and Argentina being there as well. They, they do kick the light to kick. They're particularly you know, see Buffelli for Edinburgh. Mm-hmm. You know that's the that's the kind of standard really that in Argentina they're all terrific in there. So it's really important to have players like like Kyle in the squad that are that are. Combative, competitive, and, and excellent. You know, a big part of the series, I'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, Gregor described you as a really exciting player. He kind of praised at the the hard work that you've put in yeah. to get to where you are and the impact that you've made at London Irish. How nice is it to hear him talk about you in that way? Yes, yeah, it's, it's it's amazing. Like as I said before, didn't think I'd ever be in this position. So I'm kind of just just kind of going with the flow at the minute. Obviously, still working hard on my game and stuff, but just enjoying enjoying every minute of the minute so uh yeah and i touch on uh, london irish i mean um i've not been to a game but I, you know i watch a lot of rugby i see a lot of rugby i listen to uh what goes on in, in the brentford community stadium seems to be a, a place that players home and away love playing the atmosphere yeah. the surface it, it's been a real successful year for, for you in the side hasn't it yeah 100 percent um i know we've drawn five games but uh <laughs> Obviously, we, we want to go on and win those games, and that's the, that's the next step that we need to take. But um, getting top eight and getting the Champions Cup into into Brentford, which London Irish hasn't had for ten years, is uh, is big for us. It's big for the fans, big for the club. Um, but we're we're really looking forward to showing next year what we can do, and hopefully push for push for those top four places and 
yeah, just see what see what the side can do because we're quite we're still quite a young side, mm -hmm. so we've still got a bit of maturing to do. But I mean that that will come in time and um and played a decent brand of rugby as well though, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean yeah. it has. You know, you think of the some of the tries, some of the games, some of the high scoring draws as well. But there's been a there's been an attacking mindset that sometimes you don't always see. Yeah. The last two three years have been or two seasons I think have been better anyway across the, across rugby, especially in the Premiership. But you're certainly one of the teams that like to play. And does that help in terms of your experience with, with Gregor over the the Six Nations and how Gregor likes to play? It's quite similar in some ways, isn't it, to, to what Scotland try and do? Yeah, game plan's quite similar. As in, we want to attack from well kind of from anywhere but obviously with Scotland you need to be a bit more disciplined and mm. in your 22 exit stuff like that same with Irish but with Irish we've got a bit more license to if we see an opportunity we'll go for it mm -hmm. if it doesn't work out get into our processes and um and just just get out of there really uh but the style of play that Irish and Scotland both play they both Quite suit similar. me pretty well mm -hmm. Because um, I like I like broken field. I like taking people on. I like um, I like getting my hands on the ball, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I feel like transitioning from London Irish to Scotland is kind of is pretty seamless because the game plan is pretty similar. It's not completely changing the whole game plan and mindset of what I need to what I need to do. So yeah, it's good. And in terms of the summer tour, you're obviously going to be going away for I think it's around a month that mm. you'll be with this group of players. Uh, how much are you looking forward just to the experience of being with these guys for that length of time? Uh, and Chris, you were talking about earlier how it's you know it's very similar to a World Cup, is, for yeah. example. I'm just interested to know if the guys are even talking about the World Cup at this stage. Is it on your mind? Uh, yeah. It's on our mind, but it's it's in the back burner at the minute because we've got a uh, we've got a test against Chile and three against Argentina. That's our that's our main focus at the minute is to go over there and win. Um, and then obviously, as a month as the months progress, it'll come more to the forefront of our mind. But as I say, we've got the summer tour. You've got the autumn tests, then you've got Six Nations to really think about before the World Cup. So it's all really it's all just building at the minute. Build well, it's building towards the World Cup in the Six Nations, but. Um, you yeah, it's always away. it's always going to be in the back of your mind. Those tests come around quickly as well, and and I think because of the depth and the the, the depth of the squad, there's some players obviously who who haven't been selected or are being rested. It's just a brilliant opportunity for everybody there to to show what they can do because those tests do come quickly. Um, you know, it's uh, and I think because there's so much depth in the squad as well, training becomes really important. Whereas go back to when I played sometimes training wasn't really that important because there, there wasn't the depth of, of talent there now every training sessions as all as they always are they're, they're, they're filmed they're G, uh, there's GPS putting them there's all sorts of decisions so almost everything you do is being analysed so it raises the standard and it, it just also gives loads of opportunities to as Kyle says, show what you can do and, and put a marker down for you know ultimately test selection through the, the summer and then uh, the November Six Nations and, and the World Cup next year. Kyle, um, it's a real pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us on Thank the podcast. Uh, Just put Maggie to sleep. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Maggie's fallen asleep. We've been so <laughs> boring. <laughs> but no, it's been a pleasure to meet you and really want to wish you all the best for yeah. this summer and beyond.